<laughs> so hello there, my name is Harry. I go by the alias Lethal, also known as Lethal underscore HT on my socials. I'm actually here for a new game called Squad Blast, which is a side-scrolling tactical shooter. Um, it's cloud-based, it's uh, 2D, it's uh, got lots of different game modes and varieties. It's got a CTF, uh, Payload, TDM, Conquest. So, um, yeah, it's a really great game. It's uh, very good. It's uh, got a uh, very high skill ceiling, but it's also easy to play to pick up. So it's good for also casual as well as the uh, competitive players. God. <laughs> it's been so long now. Um, I think it was I-34 when I was trying to qualify for the World Cyber Games in 2008 for Halo 3. I think it might have been I-34 or something like that. Sadly, it came second. It's been uh, definitely been my uh, my professional experience, especially on the second half of the, or the stages of my career for Halo. And then uh, I then competed next to I-36 for Halo 3. Again, it's <laughs> so long ago, I feel like I'm uh, aging at this point. Uh, the very first time I competed was back in a place called Harrow Arena um, in London in the summer of 2002. There was a local Halo 1 event. There was only about 20, 30 players at the time. Um, it was 1v1. I managed to win that in the end. And I was like, oh, OK, I quite, you know, quite like the uh, competitive aspect. I'm, I'm very competitive anyway, by any means. It's definitely the speed and pace of the game, and I kind of feel like with arena shooters, they have the highest skill ceiling out of any other game. Like, don't get me wrong, but there's obviously there's CS:GO, there's Valorant, um, there's Overwatch, and I'm not really a huge fan of class-based games. Um, it's because I've grown up, um, for example, with Halo and Quake um, as another example. I've grown up with everyone's got the same gun, the same type of uniform, the same everything, and it's just whoever's better, better. And that's one thing I noticed with Halo 1 straight away was the aim skill, the, um, the individual skill behind it, um, your reaction timings, the problem solving behind it to try and work out exactly how you need to train and create that uh, decision tree in order to keep your opponents guessing and keep them not really in the loop of what's going on. And the timings as well. I've got a mass background. I'm highly like I, I was when I was a kid I was asking for mass textbooks and exams and stuff when I was little like that's <laughs> that's how I obsessed of wills with um, on the math side but of course this is what I mean like with the arena shooters there's a lot of like mathematical um, equations to try and work out in terms of like how to try and uh, defeat your opponent not just the aim skill behind it and that's what I love in terms of the uh, aspects so far In terms of the amount of attendees, it's changed by a massive, massive margin. Um, it's nice to see a lot more games and a lot more titles being shown off across the board. Uh, a lot more different um, stands as well. Of course, you know, so many different stages. The main stage with all the esports, got the expo stand as well, and the expo stage to kind of uh, show off anything else like in between, especially from a casual and competitive aspect, like the uh, uh, for the cosplayers as well. But I think the amount of attendees, the amount of games being shown off has definitely been one of the biggest uh, surprises and aspects for me. I would like to see the side tournaments have a decent prize pool. Of course, with the main events, we see the same thing day in, day out as the prize pool in the competition and the players and teams are turning up. But I would love to see some of the side tournaments also get a bit of recognition on the main stage. For example, we had uh, PUBG, we had Fall Guys, we had even had Halo Infinite here, but they didn't really get a lot of uh, recognition overall, which is a little bit of a shame, but I can understand it's a side tournament. Um, there's budgets, there's obviously time restraints, etc. But if there's a way to somehow get those involved on the main stage, that would be also quite cool. And also, we want more Halo at Insomnia. <laughs> Um, never? Is that a good answer? I think that's probably one of the best answers. There's no reason why no one should not come to Insomnia. I think Insomnia is kind of the best grassroots spectacle to have in terms of being able to make a start in your esports career. It could be as a player where you come to BYOC and basically try and compete and just gain that LAN experience. You could be working in production to try and learn the ins and outs in terms of like in audio or as a producer, director, or as a stage manager, anything like that in terms of that respect but I think for insomnia like if you do want to work in the esports field or become a player I do feel like insomnia is one of the best places to start your uh, career
<laughs> probably with me and all the um, all of my SSRCG crew, which is um, a group of people, a group of us as uh, great friends entirely. And um, all the memories we've had in BYO. So I, that is, we've had some, <laughs> we've had some interesting but crazy times. But like back in like 2014, that kind of era, we came before and after as well. But just um, all my friends and just basically to be able to hang out, uh, keep in contact with each other because we're all from different parts of the UK. So obviously, socialing, socialising, uh, obviously on Discord is completely different to doing it in person. So it's nice to be able to bring everyone together. And because it's in Birmingham, it's basically almost bang on in the middle of the UK. So it's easy for us to come over and say hello and stuff. Sadly, we don't do that anymore. Um, you know, as we get older, you know, we have careers, we have like family to talk about, etc. So. Um, yeah, I, but I do feel like the social aspect of meeting all your friends and just meeting all the people you uh, keep in contact with online is uh, definitely my favourite.